Karen Cliff, and we have Tim now. Yes, my name is Tim Cooper. I live at uh, 8665 Chevy Chase Drive in La Mesa. I have a son who's a fourth grader at Lemon Avenue Elementary, and I am the chairman of the school site council there. I am here because my son asked me, Dad, why does our school board not respect students enough to show the president live? And I couldn't answer that in good faith. I don't understand still the reasoning. I heard and read uh, many things coming from the board after the decision. Most of them were confusing, garbled, political, partisan messages that were a poor excuse for anything, let alone from a public official. Um, particularly Mr. Winnett and Mr. Duff, uh, I'd like to say that your email responses to the initial protest about your decision were embarrassing for you and were completely incompetent and used the Constitution in a way that really was appalling and a poor example for kids. Hopefully, uh, we can teach our kids in the school and have them take a civics course so they can properly understand at least the basics of the Constitution. When, so when they see it taken out of context and misquoted, they can understand that it's a work of partisan politics, it's distortion, it's vitriol, and really doesn't have any place. I think this president in particular is a historic figure. He's the first biracial African-American person to be elected president of the United States. He will have a historical signature that will last far longer than his days on the earth. And uh, everything that he does will have, has a particular significance because of that. And I think the school board and our district um, unfortunately, didn't set a good example. I would call the members tone deaf to this uh, and very insensitive to uh, President Obama, no matter what you think of his policies, to not understand the historic nature of the election, of his victory, and of his uh, biracial nature as President of the United States, I think is appalling. Uh, again, it's not the example I would like uh, my son to learn certainly in schools, and I think it's a poor example for the school board. I'd like to give you a gift, uh, finally. Um, I brought a copy of a book for you. It's called Between Barack and a Hard Place, Racism and White Denial in the Age of Obama. <laughs> students and to our teachers. 
entirely in order here. It is my understanding that there are schools, and if I'm not mistaken, this campus is one of them, where the speech has yet to be shown. And the only reason and explanation I can give for that is that someone has been given a message that there would be some form of retribution. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's share a couple of, a couple of uh, short excerpts from President Obama's speech. Let's get to our primary source document here. So, and it says, and, and this just isn't important for your own life and your own future. What you make of education will decide nothing less than the future of this country. What you're learning in school today will determine whether we as a nation meet our greatest challenge in the future. Now, I'm going to hold this text up. And maybe, just maybe, if I hold it up to the light, and I tilt my head to the left, and I relax my eyes, maybe I can see the unconstitutionality of that. Maybe. Maybe. President Obama also said, we need every single one of you to develop your talents, skills, and intellect so you can help solve our most difficult problems. Three minutes. If you don't do that, if you quit on school, you're not just quitting on yourself, you're quitting on your country. Maybe if I tilt my head to the right and squint my eyes a little bit, I can see the insidious message there. Ladies and gentlemen, as a teacher in this district, I can say with unequivocally that the device has yet to be invented to measure my disappointment in this particular decision. haven't noticed, I respectfully disagree with it. Yeah. After Bonnie, we have uh, Jay Steiger. And right now, we have Fred Becker. Hello, my name is Fred Becker, and I reside at 4516 Terry Lane. I have two students that go to the the Mesa Valley, Spring Valley School District. And I'm here speaking on behalf of my family. As I've stated, I have two La Mesa Spring Valley School District students. And I feel the board's idea, or idea, to convene on Labor Day and take a special vote as reprehensible. And then to determine, to determine 12,800 students could not hear the President of the United States live. Talk to them. It's a disgrace. As parents, we are teaching our children respect and responsibility. And you, totally motivated by fear, you brought up emotion and voted against the characters and principles of all the students of this school district. I myself do not agree with President Obama's political decisions, but I am an American, and so are my children. And as the President of the United States, he deserved due respect. <laughs> you are the trustees of the board that governs over the education of my children. There must be accountability for your actions. Your tears of apology are a waste of time. <laughs> your, your apologies come after you see what the effect it has had on all of our students. It was your responsibility to have thought of the outcome before you voted. I respectfully, respectfully request your resignation. Yeah. Yeah. Johnson Drive in La Mesa. I've been a resident of East County all of my life. I have two children, a daughter who attended Lemon Avenue Elementary, La Mesa Middle School, and is now at Helix High School. 
My son attended Lemon Avenue and is now in eighth grade at La Mesa Middle School. Let me begin by making it clear that my remarks are not motivated by politics of any sort. Though I am a registered Democrat, my husband is a registered Republican, and we are in complete agreement on this issue. On Thursday evening, September 3rd, I received an automated message on my answering machine from Superintendent Brian Marshall, explaining that President Obama's speech on education would be broadcast in school on Tuesday, and that if any parent had concerns about this, they had the option of having their child excused. I had been hearing for a week or so through the news media, TV, radio, and print, that certain individuals were calling on schools not to show speech. I was heartened that our school board and district administration had not given in to such illogical hysteria, and so I sent an email to the board members thanking them for their decision. I did not bring partisan politics into the discussion. I merely thanked them for providing this opportunity for our kids and not getting in to the hysteria that was being generated in the media. I received an email back from Mr. Winnett, and I quote, this was on September 4th, I am not interested in the stopping of our educational program for the delivery of a political agenda. Quote, I will not be party to the let's mortgage America message that Mr. Obama would like to deliver to you. Clearly, this should have alerted me to Mr. Winnett's intentions, but I trusted this board. And so I thought nothing more of this matter until Monday evening, Labor Day, when I received a second automated message from the superintendent, this time informing us that the schools would not be airing the speech. And in fact, if and when they would air it, that was his message, it was clear, not when, but possibly if. I was incredibly upset, having no idea, of course, that the board was meeting to change the course on this. So I sent another email to the board members. Over the next few days, I received emails back from all the board members explaining why they had or had not voted for this ban. In general, the explanations from those who voted for the ban, while pretty much nonsensical, were at least nonpartisan. Not so with Mr. Winnett. In particular, Mr. Winnett explains that the airing of his speech is a direct assault on the Constitution. He goes on to say, and I quote, I would not and will not ever support this sort of selfish socialistic message as public school
because far too many of our young ones are dropping out of school. They needed to hear the president's encouragement. He's a very fine role model for them because he had his own demons to deal with as he grew up and as he fought his way through school, pulling himself from the pits to the presidency. And I think no one should take anything away from his achievements. It's just outstanding what he did with his life in spite of many barriers to his success. Our young people would benefit from hearing such a person, regardless of whether you agree with his politics or not. As a school board, you should really be grateful when anyone wants to encourage kids to stay in school. Yeah. Flew online and over the airwaves. 
All too soon, the interviews with some parents took on the appearance of an echo chamber with added inference that somehow he was taking away parental rights. Dallas PTA Council President said Obama was somehow cutting out the parents by speaking to kids during school hours. The local Union Tribune was oddly excessive in its post-decision criticism of the board, given that it too found the speech to be a bad idea because of supposed imperial overtones of a president speaking to a captive audience. As this country lost its mind! <laughs> is only eclipsed by the sheer level of misinformation and outright disinformation. It's like an odd caricature of Descartes. I think it, therefore it is. <laughs> we must not give up our ability to fact check information. Although you may not feel terribly intelligent when you look at your kids' algebra homework, <laughs> you're all very smart people. Let's use our brains and our common sense and help bring some sanity back to political discussions. The board need not shy away from controversial issues. Life can be challenging, and in our wonderfully diverse society, someone's always going to find something to disagree. The example for our children, and for all of us, Brilliant. is that we can rationally consider and discuss issues of disagreement, seek a decision that may not be universally popular, but is soundly based upon fact.
trust of the superintendent and the teachers in this district, if you cannot trust the educators that we all have come to trust with our children, I ask you all, why should we trust him? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say quickly, I ask you to think about this decision and how it happened, the motivation behind it. Proper policies and procedures were not followed, and a few extremists were allowed to dictate and control the decisions of this district. Mr. Winnett, you have no choice at this point but to resign. After Stella, we have Maureen Paolini and Jim Gogek. Hello, I'm Jim Gogek. Uh, uh, 8627 Alpine Avenue in La Mesa. I have two children attending La Mesa Spring Valley Schools. And I'm here to remind this board that the seats that you're elected to, that you're sitting in right now, these are nonpartisan seats. I don't care about your personal views on national politics any more than you should care about my personal views. Your duties as elected officials are strictly local educational policy, so I really resent it when you throw in my face your political views on national politics, which is exactly what you did. You entirely overstepped the boundaries of your elected office when you decided to dabble in national politics as local school board members. And what's worse, you added to the coarse and inflammatory discourse that is unfortunately so prevalent in our society today. I try to protect my children's ears from that sort of thing, and then I find my school board jumping right into it. And the worst example of this was the September 8th public statement by Rick Winnett, where he tries to twist the U.S. Constitution and claim that the President's speech was, quote, a direct assault on the Constitution. And he also says that our president, that our nation's thought founders would not approve of it, and that the President is a socialist. And you know, that is just utterly ridiculous. In this country, the Supreme Court interprets the Constitution, the Constitution not local school board members. <laughs> it doesn't matter what a local school board member thinks about the Constitution. It carries no weight. And when a school board member starts lecturing me about the Constitution, and about what the founding fathers think, and that, by the way, our president is a socialist, he has way overstepped the boundaries of his elected office. He has insulted our and then he has insulted our intelligence. Rick, you should not be on this school board. Yeah. Your interests are partisan politics, not educational policy. The other thing is the way the school board went around went about blocking the president's speech violates the spirit of the open uh, California Open Meeting Law. I'm assuming that you followed the letter of the law by giving proper notice to this meeting, but then you held the meeting in virtual secret. Uh, with a bare majority vote, you forced the poor superintendent to tell the parents about it on a recorded message only 12 hours before the speech so that nobody would have time to complain. It was very bad treatment of the superintendent to make you sneak around like that. want to give political speeches and engage in political machinations, quit the school board and run for Congress. Until then, <laughs> until then, keep your political views to yourself, stay out of national politics, and focus only on local educational policy. Thank you. <laughs>
So let me just say that never in my life I have seen such high disregard for the President of our United States, not even the, the one that we had in office for the last eight years. The lack of respect for the highest office in the land. Worse yet, you pass these same principles along to our students. Why should they respect the United States, the President of the United States now, or his office? Why should they? You don't. Even worse, after the board had read what the President was going to discuss, they still voted three to two to block the speech. Now, I've communicated with the superintendent and the entire board on the decision. I received excuses ranging from the head scratcher. I was concerned about the 22% of our English language learners, as opposed to the other 78% who I guess speak English, <laughs> to the downright offensive. I would not and will not support this sort of selfish socialistic message as public school curriculum. That's from President Board Member Wynette. Perhaps the Board Member Wynette forgot that two Republican presidents have spoken to American students past, but perhaps that didn't bother him as much because he agrees with a conservative right-wing bent. Mr. Wynette, it is clear to me that you used your own ideology to make your decision, and there's no room in your job for pushing any ideology on my daughter or any student for that matter. This was a blatant violation of your position. I ask that you step down and allow someone more balanced and more rational to go forward. But there's still no plan to allow, allow the speech that was meant to motivate our children to do better, do their homework, and stay in school. All messages you are supposed to support. I would also know that you plan to prevent future bad, poorly thought out decisions like this that may affect our children's education. Lastly, I'd like to say that you're a disgrace to our district, San Diego, and our country, and you'll not get your support or respect from me in the future. We'll all be watching your actions closely. You work for the students and the teachers who have no right to impose fascist censorship on the students. Just remember that. Yeah. The speaker after Paola will be Michael McCall. And right now we have Stella Fitzsimmons. Zimmerman. Zimmerman. My name is Stella Zimmerman. I live at 443 Maple Avenue. I am a parent of two daughters, a toddler and preschool future students of the La Mesa Spring Valley District. So I'm going to keep it short because I don't think I can reiterate what's already been said as eloquently as some have done. Uh, but I'm deeply concerned about the decision. And uh, I just have two things to say. Um, and I'll address them primarily to Rick Lynette. Um, that you're not required to respect a man in office, President Obama, or to agree with his politics or his policies, but as an American, you should respect the office of the president himself, the presidency itself. taught <laughs> students that if you don't agree with others, then you don't have to listen to them. And um, in an era of such polarizing political discourse, um, you did a great disservice. And secondly, I'm not going to be happy leaving here tonight until you submit your resignation. The speaker after Michael McCall will be Chris Ann Lowe Rafferty. And right now we have Maureen. Sorry, my name is Maureen Paolini. I live at 749 Hacienda Drive in part of the Fletcher Hill Elementary School Zone. I'm here to express my anger and extreme disappointment over the school board's decision to hold an emergency meeting over the Labor Day weekend and to prevent the students of the district from participating in a live, current fashion in the unusual privilege of hearing their president speak directly to them on the importance of education. The board's action concerned me for a number of reasons. First of all, I, can, I question the ethics of an emergency meeting on Labor Day weekend. I have to wonder if all the open meeting requirements were met and if the appropriate people were given adequate notice of the meeting. Also, if I could get a robocall telling me that the speech would not be shown live, I could have received a robocall telling me that there was going to be an emergency school board meeting about it. <laughs> participate. 
participate in a national conversation on education and their own futures in a timely fashion were inadequate at best and harmful to the students at worst. The idea that the speech had to be delayed so that the content could be checked to see whether it was appropriate sent a message that denigrated the President of the United States. That assumption is insulting and truly unpatriotic. Thank you. 